The Air Gun Advisor is brought to you today by Air Guns of Arizona, High Pressure Pneumatics, Michigan's premier air gun shop, Air Force Air Guns, and Rapid Air Works. You'll find links to these and more in the description down below. Today we'll be taking a closer look at both how to use this press slug system and quickly discuss the importance that this tool has for you, you air gunners who desire to shoot slugs accurately. Let's first discuss the why. Now, the number one reason for at least considering a press slug system for your shop is that slugs, well, they retain their energy and their velocity over longer distances, and pellets, well, not so much. This makes the slug the ideal projectile for those of you who are looking at long range target shooting and maybe even some longer range hunting. The second reason for picking up a press slug system has to deal with money. First, you must find that slug that's gonna work with your air gun, not your buddy's air gun, not your friend down at the range who has the same model, your air gun, because each and every air gun is just a little different and having different preferences when it comes to the size and weights of the slugs that it likes best. You will also realize that buying slugs is a lot more expensive than buying your tin of your favorite pellets. And in order to find that perfect slug, well, that means you have two choices. One is to go ahead and buy a wide variety of samples, sort through them until you find that golden slug, which can both be expensive, time consuming with shipping, and wasteful of your money as well as lead. The second option is to have one of these in your shop, allowing you to not only make a variety of calibers, but also adjust the weight and the size of the slugs that you're making with a quick adjustment of the dial up top. You can easily make a variety of sizes, weights for testing right in your own shop. And then once you find that combination that works best, well, you can dial in the press, make all the slugs you want to your heart's content, no longer having to wait for shipping or any more testing. And more importantly, well, you're no longer having to order lots and lots of slugs that you're probably never gonna use. So we know the press slug system can produce consistently accurate, high quality slugs time and time again. Let's go ahead and sit down, take a closer look at this as today, well, today's the day I'm gonna walk you through some basic setup of your press slug system, as well as make a couple of different sizes and adjustments here so you know just how to work the press slug system once you get it in your shop. Let's get to it. Setting up the press slug system could not be easier. Once you get everything mounted to where you're going to either permanently have it set up or on your mobile applications, you're going to go ahead and insert the top screw. This has a lot of fine threads and you're going to want to bottom it out. That is because those fine threads will allow you to make very small incremental changes to the slugs that you are making. Bottoming this out is going to allow us to zero the indicator that we're going to put on next. Notice that I put an O-ring on there and this will be followed by the red indicator that you'll find in your kit. This is in inches, or if you want to flip it over, you can also read the indicator in millimeters. For my setup, I go ahead and choose the millimeter side. Doesn't matter which one you choose, choose the one you're most comfortable with. Notice I'm placing it there at the zero. Then you go ahead and insert another O-ring on top. So that little red dial does get sandwiched between two o-rings and then we put this nut on top which is going to sandwich everything down and really help to hold that dial indicator down and it will allow you to re-zero it very easily whenever you need to in the future notice i'm holding the indicator and i'm going to tighten that top bolt down just a little bit to keep it from moving and again, those two O-rings in there are creating a friction hold on there. That is the reason it's important to kind of get that tight in there. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you quickly how that is adjusted. You're never going to touch that nut on top again. Instead, when you're ready to adjust it, you're going to go ahead and stick an Allen wrench inside there. 
you notice as I zeroed it out, it's a little tight to get in there at first, but then you can turn it and now it'll adjust the height of your die counterpart in the press slug. Then you'll notice on the back, once you get it set wherever you want to, well, there's a locking nut on the back and you can just go ahead and use the other Allen key that's included in your kit to tighten that down, which will prevent any movement during the slug making process. Once you've got this taken care of, we're gonna go ahead and head over and pick up the die that you chose for your kit. Mine comes in 30 caliber here, and we're gonna first insert the needle here. This needle makes the hollow point inside of the slug, and then we're gonna put that die right on top. And I'm going to only finger tighten this. First, I don't have a wrench that fits around this, but second, finger tightening has worked well for me. Also, having those rubber gloves allows you to get just a little bit extra grip on there. Now, this is the die counterpart that I was referring to earlier. It is going to go into the bolt that we first installed, and it just gets hand threaded up there until it stops. It should be a very easy process. You shouldn't have to force anything. And then on the side of your press slug, it has a nice little wrench so you can make sure that the counterpart is snug. If we want to adjust the size of the slug that we're making, again, there's two Allen keys that are included in your setup. You're gonna first want to unlock the locking screw that is on the back. This is a little confusing as to which way you turn it at first. Notice that still does not turn, so I have to go ahead and stick that Allen key in the top bolt, and that is going to allow me to make my slugs either larger by going counterclockwise, or if I already have a large slug and I want to make them smaller, I will go clockwise. Once you set the setting that you want, go ahead and lock it down with the Allen key on the back, remove both keys, place them back in their home, and well, now you're ready to make some slugs. Making slug blanks could not be easier with the cut machine that we have here. Notice also there are several different size holes there for different size lead wire for your different calibers of slugs. Before you get started though, you're gonna to want to adjust the machine so it's cutting the right size blank so you don't have any wasted lead. To make your blank smaller, you're gonna go ahead and turn that screw on the back clockwise. To make your blanks larger and heavier, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and turn that screw counterclockwise. You'll notice right here, those two, that screw and that pin, they can be swapped out so you can put the handle on the opposite side. I have it set up for a left-handed user here, but you can set it up for a right-handed user. Once everything is adjusted to make just the right size blank, well, you can start making blanks to your heart's content, knowing you got no laced blood, and wow, look at all of those blanks ready to be turned into slugs and taken down to the range on your next trip. Now that you got your blanks, you're ready to start producing slugs. Now for this demonstration, I have four different size blanks. My attempt here is to show you the importance of having the blank be the right size. So I'm gonna start out with a very large blank. I know from my experience that this blank is gonna be way too large, but look at all the waste. You're gonna see that lead start pouring out of either side and curling up that's wasted lead. I'm not gonna get any use out of that lead now, but never fear, I still made a nice slug that I can use. So that slug is not wasted, but I have a lot of wasted lead in the end in that process. Let's go ahead and try a different size blank. Now we're gonna go ahead and use the smallest blank that I have made. Go ahead and insert that into the die, it falls right in there, pull the arm down, Make sure it was crushed all the way, and well, there it is. Hmm, didn't see any waste, but that certainly doesn't look like a slug that I'm gonna be able to use. So, well, wasted lead again. Let's try the next 
largest size that I had. We'll put that in there. Now this is a little smaller than the first one that we did. Yep, yeah, yeah, there's a little waste there. Not too bad, much better. Definitely not wasting as much lead as I did in that first trial. But that blank's probably still just a little too large. And, well, I'm not a fan of wasting lead. Let's go ahead and adjust this to a smaller blank. The last one I have sitting there, you're probably already guessing, yeah, it's going to be perfect. And, well, I planned it that way. But here we go. Go ahead and press that. Notice there's no waste coming out the holes or very little waste coming out of the holes. And then that slug, well, that slug is perfect and ready to go. We can take that down to the range and shoot it in our favorite air gun. Finally, let's take a look at the consistency here. Notice the consistency. There's one slug. I'm going to pull out another one from the pot. There we go. Let's see what comes. Uh, same number. Look at that. Uh, yeah, that scale might be just a little off. Who knows? Anyway, let's pull out another one and see what we have. Yep, same measurement. Guess what, guys? We could go through that whole little box there, and we're going to have some accurate slugs. So obviously having the press slug system in your shop is really a game changer for those of you who are serious about the slug game. No matter if you're shooting 177, 22, 25, or even 30 caliber, the press slug system has you covered with different size dies, different weights, and well, consistency too.